lesions and plaques and black holes and atrophy. Oh my! Today we're going to discuss MRI results. Hello my dear friends and welcome. If you are new to the channel, a special welcome to you. Please make sure you hit subscribe and the notifications bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. My name is Vicki Hadge and this is Even So It Is Well. On this channel, I share my thoughts about living well with chronic illness. This does not mean that my thoughts are necessarily going to agree with your thoughts. And it also does not mean that my thoughts are medical advice. It just means that I'm thoughtful. Today we're going to talk about MRIs and MRI basics. And I need to reinforce that this is not medical advice. If you have questions about your MRI or interpreting your MRI, please speak with your neurologist. So MRI basics. What is an MRI? An MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. And essentially they take a gigantic magnet and they use it to get images of your body. For me, this time it was my head and my cervical spine. MRI machines come in different strengths. There's the 0.7T, the 1.5T, and the 3T. The 0.7s can be open or wide MRIs, which can be more comfortable, but they have lower image quality. My neurologist requests that I get all my MRIs done on a 3T machine because it gives the best images. And I also try to use the same 3T machine every year if possible. I go back to the same place. I also do the same with my mammograms. That way they're comparing apples to apples, same images, same machine, so they can get more accurate results. As a patient, I am not trained to read MRIs, but I have talked with my neurologists extensively about the results of my MRIs, and I have researched MRIs and what they're looking for specifically for multiple sclerosis. And there are different indicators that they're looking for. For those who are not familiar with what they're looking for on your MRIs, there are T2 bright spots or T2 bright lesions or plaques. That's active inflammation with your disease. There's T1 black holes, which are areas that are damaged from previous inflammation. They're actually holes in the brain tissue. And there's atrophy, brain shrinkage. Everybody has brain atrophy after the age of 18 or so, but MS patients have brain atrophy up to 10 times faster than the general population. I have three tips I'd like to share with you today. Tip number one, stay curious about your own health. Look at the MRIs, discuss with your doctor what the doctor is seeing, what kind of artifacts they're looking at, what indicators of disease they're seeing in your brain and your central nervous system. This is your health and you deserve to know what's going on. So ask to see them, look at what the doctor's looking at, discuss it with them. Tip number two, get a copy of your MRIs. These are your medical records, so you should be able to get a copy. Just request a copy when you go in for your MRI, and they should be able to make it either that day or you can go back on another day and pick them up. This is important so you can review the images before you go and see the doctor. And also, if you ever move, it is very handy to have your MRI records in your hand. Sometimes it can take a lot of paperwork and a lot of time to transfer records from one hospital to another if you've moved to a new location. So having the MRIs with you can be very, very helpful. Tip number three. If your hospital has an online portal for your records, sign up for it. This is a great way to message with the office and also to get your test results. I always review my test results before my appointment. That way, if I have any questions, I can write them down before I see the doctor. If your hospital doesn't have a portal, request that your results be mailed to you before your appointment. That way you have time to review before you speak with your doctor. All right, let's talk about my MRI results from this year. I'm gonna give you the good news straight off. They were stable, hooray! That means there's no new disease activity since my last MRIs. So reading your test results. So every time I get 
a result from the hospital, usually a different radiologist will look at the MRIs and summarize them. And here are some of the things that they've written about my MRIs in the last few years. April 2017, extensive involvement of cervical spinal cord with plaques resulting in atrophy. Yikes! August 2018, stable multiple sclerosis plaques. There is no significant changes since the prior study. Yippee! August 2019. Multiple ill-defined T2 hyperintensive lesions. Conclusions. Extensive demyelinating plaques. Not significantly changed. Extensive demyelinating plaques? Uh-oh. So at my appointment with my doctor, I discussed the wording of these different summaries. What does extensive demyelinating plaques mean? To me, that sounded a little bit scary, but actually it's just the interpretation that the radiologist used. All my plaques are stable. The demyelinating plaques that he was referring to are old news. That's from a long, long time ago. So nothing has changed. Everything is stable. Let's take a look at my brain, shall we? Here's an example of a T2 bright lesion. And here's another view. And here's a T1 black hole. Yup, that's brain damage. There's a hole. But luckily, I have lots of reserve left. And here are the extensive demyelinating plaques in my cervical spine. Those long, bright strands that are in my spine are probably responsible for most of my MS symptoms. Because the spine is responsible for transmitting information back and forth to the brain, in theory, the lesions on our spine are responsible for more of our MS symptoms than lesions in the brain. Want to learn more about MRIs and plaques and lesions and brain atrophy? One of my favorite neurologists is Dr. Aaron Boster out of the Cleveland Clinic. He has a YouTube channel, and I'm going to put a link in the description below to his playlist on MRIs. Check it out. The question of the day is, do you get MRIs? And do you review the results with your neurologist? Do you talk about plaques and lesions and black holes and atrophy? If you do, please leave an answer in the comments below. I would love to know your experience as well. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please give it a like. And also, as a reminder, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Mm -hmm.